Okay, I think I'm going to get us started with what is definitely close to the second to last session, as there will be closing remarks at 5.30 in the room that we all had our opening remarks in. But um, we're hopefully going to find some energy, and uh, you all will find this slightly entertaining and or interesting and or a way to participate and do something new um, and hear about what we're up to. So um, by way of introduction, first of all, my name's Liz, Liz Lyon. Um, I'm not Liz Lemon, though, because I'm in New York, uh, that often happens. A lot of my colleagues will be like, that's Liz Lemon, um, but it's not. So I'm not. I'm Liz Lyon. You can find me at Geographer Liz on the Twitter sphere. And um, I always like to start off my talks with two questions, mostly to see where you all are at. So um, since there's not too many of us here today, I'm going to start off and say, um, everybody stand up. Everyone stand up if you are willing and able. Who here took a geography class between kindergarten and the 12th grade if you went to school in the United States? Wow, really? I'm actually surprised. Geography, not just social studies. So you really legitimately took a class called geography. Okay, so not that many of you, and some of you who might be raising your hands might be dating yourselves, um, as geography um, as a standard has not been um, a big part of our curriculum for a long time. So here's my uh, next question. So sit down if this isn't true. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to follow through. I know, we might, we might move to Simon Says. So who here believes that they think differently? Does anybody not think that they think differently? Then, every, I mean, anybody else, the person next to you or the person on the subway or whatever, do you think that you think differently? Okay, so the reason why I'm asking this question is because geographers, like sometimes when you are a geographer, you already think that you think differently. Go ahead and sit down. Um, I know, really, I just made, I wanted to make certain you stood up, got some blood flowing, we got you know, a little jive moving, whatever. But everybody here basically thinks differently in some way, and by coming together as a community, we are able to share and to grow and to build for our next generation. So if you're going to walk away with two things from this talk today, I want you to know that in order to have a next generation and generations after that of, map, of mappers, of map makers, of geographers, whatever you term us, uh, we need to work across institution stovepipes and collaborate around existing education standards that are accessible to everyone that teaches these skills, not just the cool technology, but the skills that are behind the technology. And then the second thing that I want you to walk away with is Geo Badges, what I'm here to talk to you about, is striving to do this, to be an open platform that anybody can access to build and to validate a place to gain some of these credentials. So um, first things first. Um, so like many of you, uh, I have a day job. And uh, I've been a federal employee for almost 10 years now. Up until about a month ago, I uh, worked at the Corps of Engineers, and I just recently transitioned over to the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. But I also volunteer a lot of my time with a bunch of groups in Washington, D.C. So when you ask me who I am, I'm first and foremost a geographer. One of uh, the best things about this week is we saw, or this weekend, I have no concept of time, is a lot of people pointed out their first OpenStreetMap edit. Well, this is my first map. Um, and like many of you, I have an almost overwhelming enthusiasm for all things about our place and our space, which means it's more than just maps, but it's the data, the technology, and the visualizations that are also important. So I actually didn't get to take geography in the United States. Uh, I was, my first geography class was when I was 12 at Lincoln International School in Kampala, Uganda. And, and that was my first map. And it's part of the way that I moved into becoming much more of the geographer that I am today, because I was interested in economics, mapping, geography, all that. So I don't get paid to map an o OSM. And frankly, I don't actually want to, because for me, there's purity in volunteering. And that's my choice. I'm pretty lucky. Um, in my volunteer experiences, I got to follow on some of the uh, formidable heels of shoes of great leaders before me. Kathleen Danielson was one of the leads at GODC, and as she migrated over to Berlin to build another community, um, I was able to follow up and grow and to build into that community. 
And I also volunteer um, a lot of my time with a lot of other groups, Map Story, GeoMakers, MapTime, OpenStreetMap. But why does all of that matter? Is all of those groups have an opportunity to participate and to um, be a part of the GeoBadges community. So in addition to having an outlet for my exceptionally um, excessive bucket of overwhelming map enthusiasm, yes, that is a tagline I put on t-shirts, um, I also was ultimately welcomed into this community. And in some of these cases, I get to build the communities as well. And again, all of these are choices, but I believe so strongly in these communities because I want to build a lasting legacy that is for my grandchildren and my grandchildren's children and so on and so forth, that they're going to have geography in the schools so that we can see things like open street mapping in schools, that we can see spatial learning entering into the schools. So if you've been to Phosphor G, if you've been to State of the Map, if you've been to some of the WHERE camps, we talk a lot about community and about how we need to diversify to be more inclusive. These are all really good things. But we also need to do some deliberate outreach and, and to take advantage of efforts like map time, which is awesome. Map time is one of the coolest things right now because of how global it is and how fast globally it's been able to spread. And also not only that, but things like Teach OSM that provide focused learning modules. And the AAG and Esri, there are lots of people who are out there. But here's a question, as we're listening to ourselves and we're listening and growing and learning about how we can be a better community, are we also listening to those that we wanna serve, that we want to work with? So have we been listening to our teachers, to their needs, to their desires? And do we take advantage of, of the best platforms, the best uh, technology, which may not be ours, to deliver to their communities. So you know how I mentioned that I worked for the Corps of Engineers. Uh, one of the things that happens when you work with a bunch of engineers is you learn a lot about building things. I do not have a civil engineering degree, but uh, I did absorb a lot by osmosis. So uh, today I'm going to talk about building bridges, which is ultimately the opportunity that Geo Badges provides for this and many other groups. So building bridges, some fun facts. Um, how do you build a bridge? Do you start in the middle? Do you start at one side and work your way over to the other side? Um, do you start with different materials? There is an immense amount of planning that happens when you start going forward and build a bridge. Also, fun fact, the chief architects of a bridge are held responsible for long times past the initial um, architecture of the bridge. And if they fail, there's some serious trouble that happens. So um, when you start building a bridge, you have to be very much aware of what's on either side of that river or of that chasm or whatever you're connecting. And when you start building it, you build it from both sides at the same time and you meet in the middle. So teachers have one of the hardest jobs because they have to operate in complex institutions being held accountable by so many different entities. They have to be held accountable by the community, their parents, the institution, students, their, par uh, their peers. And so in, in addition to their tireless work they put into building projects and lessons, for any new idea they want to put forward, K-12 through teachers have to show how they use those lessons that link to the standards that they are held accountable. And not only that, they also have to demonstrate how by doing these types of projects contribute to their own professional development. That's a lot of work. So, and it's not only that, it's a lot of paperwork. So I know we laughed a little bit earlier um, about some of the institutions that a lot of us have to go through as a federal employee to get approved for travel. It's an astronomical about, uh, amount more of paperwork for teachers to start thinking about how they add in new into their, uh, into their curriculum. And I don't want to trivialize this. I do really believe in standard learning objectives. They are important. We do need metrics, and we do need structure in our education system, but there are ways that we can help, that we can link, that we can bridge. So let's get to the question at hand. What do our K through 12 teachers need in order to integrate into open mapping into classrooms that's at scale? And scale is really important with this. We've seen a lot of really good examples of people starting to use OpenStreetMap, um, but there are other capabilities and there are other things to consider. And then how do we do that so that it's repeatable? Because again, end goal, geography in the schools. Um, kids being able to understand how they can relate the information that they know about space and place in their local community. 
So first and foremost, and this is going to come and be a common theme, teachers need to have curriculum. Um, and they need to be aligned or be able to be connected to standards. Because if it's not connected to a standard, chances are pretty slim that it's not going to be taught. There's just not enough time in the day to get all of the extras in when there's just so much that you already have to cover. Any new idea, in addition to being linked to a standard, like I said earlier, they have to be demonstratable, or, or teachers have to be able to demonstrate that these projects contribute to their own professional development. That's a lot of sides to a lot of different coins. That's a lot of different audiences. The reason why I'm hammering on this so much is because it's hard. It's not easy. We've seen teachers time and time again tirelessly giving of themselves. So how do we give to them? And that's really what we're trying to get to today. So as OSMers and other entities, we produce a lot of geospatial data. And there's a few of us who are producing a lot and a lot and a lot of geospatial data. The world, and again, for me, this is a little bit of assumption, um, consumes a whole lot of our data without producing and without sharing back. So other folks have been talking about this here, which is great. Um, but what I would really like to see as we move forward with partnerships with teachers is um, more producers who add diversity to the data. And Teach OSM, and that's, we're going to talk about that a little bit more, is one of those entities that's doing that by providing some rigor and providing some opportunity to diversify those who are entering in data into our production. So there are more and more teachers and communities leaders stepping up to help OSM get into the classrooms. Um, earlier today, uh, Sean Goulet uh, did a great talk, as well as Britta Ricker. All of them are pro uh, putting forward a vision for geospatial open street map information in the schools. Um, and if you're sticking around tomorrow, Stephen Johnson and Maggie Colley are also doing um, some great exercises with Teach OSM. And there are many others who are also teaching and integrating. But what do our teachers need and what do our students need? They need to have connections to standards and also this means that we can scale this so that it's repeatable. So what, what are we doing? Because really I just built up a big pitch. Okay, so the Open Badges community, we're trying to link in with the mapping community. Open Badges uh, is a community that is centered around the Mozilla Foundation, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. And obviously, we're all here about the state of the map community. So Geo Badges, we created a platform. We're in the process of building out a community to seed the next generation and the generation after that. So we do have a team. Uh, John is somewhere. I don't know where. Well, he was here. But anyway, oh, he's in the back. So uh, if you haven't met John, John and I actually partner on another project, uh, MapStory. But before he joined up with MapStory, he was working in education at the Chicago Public Schools, where he coordinated service learning. And in DC, he uh, has worked on policy that's dealing with technology and innovation in schools across the US. None of this is easy. This is a lifetime of, of policies to get your way through. So um, these are a collaboration between a bunch of entities that are building on both sides of the river at the same time to meet in the middle. That's what our goal is here. So what about open badges? So with open badges, you get recognition for skills that you learn anywhere. So what are they? I'm just going to quote Mozilla here because it's pretty fabulous. Um, as uh, a badge is an online representation of a skill that you've earned, and open badges take that concept one step further. It allows you to verify your skills, your interests, and achievements through credible organizations. And because the system is based on an open standard, you can com uh, combine multiple badges from different issuers to tell the complete story of your achievements, both online and off. You can display them wherever you want, and then you can share them for employment, education, or lifelong learning. So I've got a degree in geography. That's awesome. Some other people have been able to learn about geography through informal means. How do we show and to share that we have um, some standards with curriculum that makes that uh, understanding that there is a common way of saying, OK, this is what a geography do geographer does, or this is what a map maker does. And Open Badges helps us do that. So, 
We also uh, have been working with the American Geographic Society, which used to be housed at Columbia University, but Columbia doesn't have a geography department anymore. Um, but more importantly, this is the oldest American Geography Association. And by working with them, this allows us to connect and to build into a, uh, a, an academic, almost an authoritative academic community um, who help us uh, maintain the pedigree of how we teach geography over time, and they've been around since 1851. So they are there as a convening body to lend some credence to um, the weight of what we are doing. So it's not just a, a point and a click and I move a dot, you start understanding the meaning behind moving that dot, which is the important part here. And then we've also worked with teachers through a, uh, a part of the Department of Education. There's something called Digital Promise. And the goal of this is to um, accelerate innovation into the future by really providing some of these micro-credentialing platforms, micro-credentialing capabilities so that teachers are able to plug into a broader community, again tying to standard learning objectives, so that they can um, leverage and use those things to uh, t help make their lives a little bit better and a little bit easier. So let me show you where we are today, because it's not just about doing um, and showing, but it's also about the work that we're doing and where we're going. So as an example, if you were a teacher today and you wanted to um, link in some sort of community mapping activity, you would possibly Google that. And what would come up is um, a great rubric up um, from uh, the Jane Goodall Institute to talk about community mapping. This is a PDF. So that's locked in a, uh, in a system. So what if we started unlocking this, making this information dynamic and, and uh, relatable to other things that a lot of other companies and platforms can provide? And again, tying all of these things to the t things that teachers need, which is um, recognizing what is being taught, the method, what does it all mean? And then more importantly, how do you report that? How do you resource that? How do you evaluate that? How do you know that your students are actually learning? So there is a body of work that exists out there that's just not digital. It's digital in that we have a PDF, but it's not digital in that it's searchable, that it's queryable, that it's interactable. So um, where we've started, uh, naturally, we're here at OpenStreetMap. So we started with TeachOSM. And um, what we're doing is we're starting to test to see if this, uh, as we run through the rigors of the, of the process, does it work? So um, there is the first OSM badge that's being created right now. And it starts with the basics, registering, creating, editing information, and then providing that credential afterwards. So it's just as the start. So this is ultimately how OSM, OpenStreetMap, gets into the schools. And this is important because it's also about protecting our nation's children. So we, when you go to OpenStreetMap, you have to register with an email address. Does it really make sense for an eight-year-old to have an email address that's editing information on OpenStreetMap? There could be some vulnerabilities there. So by going through a credentialing process and working with a credentialing body, we are actually pro uh, protecting um, and, and helping to mitigate any damage that could come to children, because there could be a path, and we don't want to see that happen. So learners and badge builders come together at GeoBadges. Um, they build a repeatable, transparent framework and it's certified through the Credly process. So let me close with a call for help. Um, GeoBadges is not just an OpenStreetMap platform. It is a digital platform that through it, we can provide our children's educators the tools that they need to link to these standard learning objectives and their professional development. Everybody is welcome into it. There can be an Esri badge for analyzing OpenStreetMap data. OpenStreetMap is a database. Uh, Esri, um, QGIS, those are software packages that allow you to understand and start making spatial assertions about relationships between information. Um, you could have a digital globe badge where you're doing aerial photo uh, photography 
interpretation. You could have, um, look, look at, you could post something up on open aerial map and look at um, how you uh, relate historical imagery. Um, you could be telling a story with data. All of those are examples. Everybody comes together um, under geo badges. And what the thing is to highlight is it's more than just data. It's about spatial thinking and spatial knowledge and really teaching those skills as early as we possibly can. I don't know why that's playing, but apparently it's playing. You don't really want to watch it. Trust me. Ah! Okay. So we'll be developing badges this summer, and it's just going to play because I can't figure out how to pause it um, unless I hit the pause button. Um, and as we prep for the National Conference on Geographic Education this August in Washington, D.C., we really invite you to join us. And of course, the mo most important thing is to promote quality, not just to enable teachers and students to get involved, but to help ensure that they are learning and are scaffolded to know what good looks like. So we're going to need some validators from academia and companies who have a passion for involving and empowering the next generation in this movement. And there's still lots to figure out here. So question for you, who's going to be the next uh, Jack Dangerman, uh, the next Mapbox, the next Digital Globe, the next Planet Labs? Do we know who the next hashtag GOTUS is, geographer of the United States? Um, will we even have one? Well, not if this keeps happening. Um, and this is not an only example. You all have seen numerous times on numerous news sources, Fox, CNN, all of them have made mapping errors. And uh, when this happens, this is not the fault of one person. I'm not blaming one person. What I'm highlighting here is that there is a nation that doesn't understand the basics of geography, and we need to fix that. So um, if we don't do that, if we don't take the time right now to do the work, to listen to our teachers, to work with them in their platforms, bridging the work that we do and meeting in the middle, we're not going to be able to create this lasting um, opportunity for our grandchildren to ultimately have a much better awareness and understanding of the space and places that they live in. So I remember that I started a good teaching um, lesson is you start where you end and reinforce the two points you want people to walk away with. So as a reminder, in order to have generations of mappers, we need to work across institutional stovepipe, and we need to collaborate around existing education standards that are accessible to everyone that teaches skills and not just technology. We want to build that cool stuff that helps reinforce learning. And lastly, GeoBadges is striving to be an open place that anyone can access to build and to validate and to gain those credentials. Through its inherent transparency and authenticity, this is a place where teachers and mappers can come together with a common goal to teach coming generations. So with that, I'm going to close out um, and open up to any questions. And then we'll end a little bit early in case you all want to make a run for the closing session for the conference room. Yes, and if I can't hear you, shout. Oh, or clap. All of, all of those are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? I mean, it is awesome. Oh, Andrew, but you have to yell. And there's a green light. All right, so could, does, this, does this work? Yes. Okay, um, so how, does the, how do the badges actually get awarded? Like, who checks to make sure they did the right thing and, and stuff like that? No, good question. So the question was, um, and you missed your photo op. Um, we can pose it later. The question was, um, how do badges get awarded and uh, who checks to make certain that they are actually valid? So, you know, I said earlier that we actually do need validators. And so part of that right now is there is, there is a, a need to grow a community of those who have um, the recognition of being able to say, yes, that is actually the, uh, the right task and the right way to describe that task. Some of that comes through the American Geographic Society. Um, we've talked to one of your former professors, Dr. Marie Price, and so she's been helping us. Dr. Marie Price is a geographer at George Washington University, and so she's been helping us and making certain as well that we're thinking through a lot of those things so that we do lend credence and authority to information. Oh, and I have five minutes, and it's got really cool map stickers on it. Okay, yes.
Ha have you tried uh, any small time testing to, to see how the system works on a small scale, like maybe a class or whatnot? So that's a really good question. Um, the testing has not yet happened. Um, the 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 goal, so the question was, um, have we tried any small uh, testing yet? So that's what's happening over the next couple of months. We've got the Teach OSM badge that we've just structured. And so now we'll be working with Stephen, with Maggie, to actually see, does this work through its rigors? Where do we have some um, pitfalls? What do we need to go through? Because like many new concepts, new ideas, it's an agile um, process that is going to take some some. Uh, probably have a couple of bumps in the road and we'll fix it and then we'll evolve it. Lydia. I have two questions. Um, you can have one to start. <laughs> two questions. No, I'm kidding. Um, so I understand, you know, for the people in D.C., it's probably a little easier to get involved with the August event. What about everybody else who's in maybe a different location? How do you encourage everybody to uh, contribute? And that was question one. Okay, do you want to know, you can also say to question number two. Yeah, the, the question, second question is, uh, so the focus right now is working with the American Geographical Society. Uh -huh. So what about um, inter involving international geographical societies? You know, that's a really good Thank question. You. So the two questions were, um, one, how do people, we're Washington, D.C. heavy, um, and how do people gain um, access and how do, can they participate? And then the follow-on with that is, uh, yes, we are tied right now to the American Geographic Society, but what about other international geography societies or other international bodies? Um, so with that, uh, right now we are really focused on American um, standards of learning and American education system. Um, it's not to say that somebody else can't take and learn from what we're doing, but curriculum um, across the world is, is actually fairly diverse. And um, there's, there's American uh, school systems, and we're at State of the Map US, so that's why we're talking about that too. But there's also the International Baccalaureate, the IB curriculum. They could certainly take some of the lessons that we are walking through, and they can learn from that, and they could possibly model um, or build something similar. But right now, we're really focused on uh, the US. As opposed to, or uh, in, to answer your second question, um, how do people who are outside of Washington, D.C. get involved? Well, one of the best things about the partnerships that uh, John and I have been involved in for the past couple of years is we've been pretty virtual. And so while, yes, uh, we are inconveniently or possibly conveniently geographically located in the same uh, region, our team is spread out and our network is spread out. So as these... Um, uh, badges come online. The intent is that anybody can participate because it's all virtual to begin with and standard learning objectives are those that go across the country and they're not specific to one state or the other. So I think that probably will get to an answer of that. Um, I've got, oh, John is going to caveat. Maybe. Hey, too, there's not much at geobadges.org but there is a newsletter at the footer. Um, like. Oh, perfect. Good. So add your email address. That's the quickest way. And then we're going to figure out over the next few weeks how to get people together virtually. But just go to geobadges.org and the footer and let us know if you have an interest um, and we'll at least have your contact. So go to geobadges.org. This is for the at-home audience. And uh, if you have any questions, there is a place for you to enter in your information. So I promise that we are actually going to get out of here a little bit early. Is there one last question? Marco? Polo? Polo Marco. Okay. With that, thank you so much for your time and uh, hit up the last session.